Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode and second video about the Azure Databricks uh, and today we will speak about the Azure Databricks networking uh, specifically when we are integrating Azure Databricks to our existing network um, first I'm gonna go through the whiteboard and I'm, I'm having here this from the documentation uh, this diagram to uh, go through it but I want to discuss first what what are we uh, trying to integrate? The integration part happens when you are creating a workspace. And a workspace, as you know, is just a place for authoring and collaboration between the team. For any code in this workspace to run, this workspace needs to be attached to a cluster. You create a cluster, you run the cluster, and then uh, you run your code inside this cluster. This cluster is a cluster of virtual machines, and these virtual machines will be inside the VNet. Uh, that's what we are integrating here. So typically, before without before this feature uh, released, when you are creating a workspace, what happened is uh, the workspace creation create a managed resource group. And the managed resource group will have three resources. One is a storage account to act your, as your uh, DBFS. And second is a VNet. And a third is a network security group or NSG. Now with the, with the VNet integration, these two are not created and the workspace will be uh, connected to a, a VNet that you are having pre-existing in your uh, environment. Now, um, this is critical because we need to understand the, the, the web interface itself for the Databricks and the cluster management, basically all the control plane that does not exist in your VNet. Your VNet, once you create the workspace, will not have anything. Once you log into your workspace and you create your first cluster, your first cluster will exist, the network card for this cluster will be attached to your VNet. But you, but for Databricks web interface, that will not be inside uh, your own workspace. As you know, when, if, if you recall, if you logged in before to the web interface for Databricks, you will find that it's the first part, the subdomain is the Azure location, the Azure region. Let's say it's Canada Central. And the domain name is azuredatabricks.net. So it's it's always azuredatabricks.net. This is the web interface, and all the control plane is installed inside uh, a Microsoft managed uh, uh, subscription inside the VNet controlled by Microsoft. Only the, the the data plane or your own cluster will be the one deployed inside your VNet. Now for the requirements for this one. The documentation lists some requirements, but I'm, I'm going to go through the, the important ones. That's the second part, the requirements. So you need to have two subnets. And if you have these two subnets uh, allocated to a workspace, you cannot have another workspace for it. So if you require to have uh, two different workspaces, you need to have four different subnets. Does this mean that the workspace will have exclusive access and you cannot have any other machines inside this uh, subnet? No. Uh, you can. This subnet can have any other resources other than uh, Databricks workspaces. So it's two subnets per workspace. However, these subnets can have other machines attached to these subnets. Now, how it's done? It's done when once you do this part of the installation part of the uh, installation that the workspace will have access to your subnets. Basically, you are doing delegation from you to the workspace. So this workspace or Azure Dataplex workspace resource provider will manage these subnets on your behalf. If you have already uh, NSG attached to these subnets, the, the resource provider will add new rules inside this NSG. If you don't have one and you are using the um, the portal or, or in your ARM template, you are creating a subnet uh, that will be created automatically. So the portal experience will take care of this, will create a subnet and then will add the rules. If you have your own subnet already attached, then 
uh, these will be uh, the rules will be added automatically for you and for the workspace to maintain this situation and nothing will happen uh, that will um, risk the the workspace configurations um, the workspace will will create on the on this subnet uh, policy a, a virtual network intent policy and this intent policy will make sure that no one can can be uh, or be able to create the rules created on the NSG that's the the how it's done uh, for routing and peering and anything else that's allowed so your vnet here that's your vnet this vnet can be uh, peered to another vnet you can have user defined routing However, user-defined routing, because the two subnets, one of them will have the public IPs, the other one will have private IPs only. The, the public IPs will be exposed outside your VNet and the communication will be from the control plane to your cluster through these public IPs. So if you do routing, you need to make sure that you do exceptions for the, the, the control plane. So when the traffic comes here directly to the, to the public IP, and you have routing that means you have a firewall here for example that means all the traffic going back will go back first to the firewall and the firewall will return it this is asymmetric routing and that will not uh, make your cluster healthy you you can do it however you will find that your cluster is always failing when you are provisioning a new cluster um, that's a very brief overview quickly on the whiteboard and we will have the demo now for the details of this. In this first demo, we'll see how to use the portal to create a new uh, Databricks workspace and attach this Databricks workspace or make it associated with the VNet. First, let's uh, see the VNet and explore the VNet that we, that we have created. I created a very small VNet. This is the smallest size that you can have, size that you can have for Databricks. And in this one, it's slash 24. This is the whole VNet. And it has two subnets. One of them is called private. And it's slash 25. That means it has only 120, 123 available IPs. The second one is called public. Uh, so let's see the experience. Uh, by the way, when we see here, you'll see there is no delegation. There is no security groups attached to them. If you go to details, uh, no NSG no routing tables and no delegation. This is the initial state. Now let's go to the creation. I'm gonna go to, go to my resource group. I'll create Azure Databricks. Create, use the existing resource group in Canada Central. Premium, and now in this option, I'm going to deploy it inside uh, VNet, but we know that this is only the data plane or the control plane. I'm going to choose my DeepRex test 2, and the public subnet is called public, the private subnet is called private. The IP range is here for the public one. This is 128 and this is CU slash 25. Um, that's all what we need and we can create the workspace right now. However, let's inspect the automation options, which will show us the ARM template that will be used. Uh, options, yes, here. So the data prex with Vnet for automation options. In the ARM templates, you will see we have three resources to be created. One is an SG, the second one is a nested template, and in the second one here, we are just giving the uh, delegation permission to the Microsoft Databricks slash workspaces. This is the resource that we are giving or the service name that we are giving the delegation to. So from now on, this service will be able to do changes inside my subnet. 
uh, this is the MSG, this is the uh, delegation, and then the last part is the Databricks itself. Okay, let's go back here, and I'm going to create it. Deployment succeeded now, and let's go to the resource. You see here the Databricks, and uh, this is the workspace. I'll see the Managed Resource Group. This is the Managed Resource Group, and the name is Auto Created from my workspace name. And I see here as well the virtual network. So let's go and see the virtual network again. Go to the subnets. Now we have we see some changes happening here. I see that there is a delegation, Microsoft.databricks slash workspace. So I'm delegating uh, the management of the subnet to the uh, service. This is on the subnet level only, not on the whole virtual network. And I see there is uh, one network security group created. Although these are two different subnets, the private one will have uh, only the private IPs for the network card with the private IPs for the cluster, and the public one will have the public IPs. Uh, however, the network security group uh, rules are the same for both of them. That's why in the creation, it will create only one NSG with, with the same uh, rules in both of them. Let's check this one. See these rules. So here is the network security group, and these are the rules that are created by the Databricks. All of them will be starting by Microsoft.databricks workspace, and then something to describe the, the rule. So let's see here. Uh, first, for the inbound security rules, we'll see the first one is actually a duplication of the one that is built in the system rule uh, that allows all the communication uh, between all the, the network cards inside the same VNet. So it's uh, from pro any protocol, any port, the source virtual network to the virtual network that's allowed. This is not new. This is already built in in any uh, virtual network. However, the new ones will be these two. Uh, so these are the traffic coming from the control plane to the Databricks cluster to control them. And if you try to delete this one, for example, you'll see it's failed. And the failure here because of the network intent policy that was created to make sure that no one can tamper with these rules to the point that Databricks clusters will not be function. If you want to see this intent policy, uh, when you go to the resource group here, I'm going to group by the type, and I will show the hidden types. It's by default hidden, and I will go down here, and one of these should be here. You go. Microsoft.network slash network intent policy. These are the intent policies created for my Databricks. If you go here, you can see the details of them. Intent policies are not documented publicly, are not used, like no customer can use the intent policy for themselves. It's used by some services to make sure that the network configurations uh, not to be changed. And like from my experience, I know this is used in, in Databrex and this is used in the Azure SQL managed instance as well. And it's used by the service itself to make sure that no one can change them. So there is no changes here. Uh, when you delete the, the workspace, this intent policy will be deleted. Then you can delete uh, the NSG, for example, or, or, or remove uh, any rules from this NSG if you would like. That's the first demo. In the second demo, I'm going to show you uh, when we are creating a cluster, where to see this cluster. So I'm going to go back to my uh, Databricks workspace and here the managed resource group. You see in the managed resource group, in this case, we have only a storage account. If you refer back to the previous video where we are seeing uh, creating Databricks workspace without the VNet integration, we used to see two more resources here, which is the VNet and the NSG because we are using our own VNets, then the creation process did not create these two resources. However, we don't see any other resources. We don't see any like clusters. We will see the cluster once we get back to our Databricks and log into the Databricks itself. 
this is the Databricks interface and as you can see it's always the region dot azure Databricks dot net that means it's not inside your vnet you cannot control the access to this one other than the controlling the access by um, azure ad conditional access in this case i see customers they are trying to limit the access to uh, the Databricks from inside their own their own offices only so no uh, data scientist or data analyst can access Databricks from outside the office in this case this can be done by using Azure ED conditional access we can discuss this in a, in a later video but for now we see the Databricks interface the clusters and let's see the clusters here I'm gonna create a, a quick cluster just to demonstrate this and uh, we'll see the what is created the network of these clusters and which IPs are connected to or which network cards are connected to which um, uh, subnet refreshing here here you go so create a cluster give it a name test zero one I'm gonna accept everything minimum workers are two and I have a driver as well. So that means we'll have three machines initially created, one as a driver and two machines as workers. I'm gonna create this cluster. I paused the video for like roughly, I think three, four minutes until the cluster is created. Now I'm sure that everything is created and ready for me. Uh, I will get back to the Azure portal. This is the Dataplex uh, blade. And I will go to the managed resource group in the managed resource group now we see more resources let's group them by type and let's look at them carefully here so the first part will be desks so we have these desks attached to the machines we have network interface i'll come to them in a moment public ips i have three public ips so it seems there is a public ip per machine so every single machine has its own public ip uh, storage account this is the storage account that was created from before and we have three machines as we expected uh, two workers and one driver all the all the machines names are like as you can see it's a randomly generated um, like uh, digits and characters and Databricks has the metadata for these so Databricks can communicate with them for the network interfaces you will see uh, like this is the name of the machine and then private NIC and then public NIC you'll see all the private NICs are attached to the um, the, the private subnets so if I go to my uh, virtual network here I will see these are all the IPs attached to this virtual network all the devices all of them are network interfaces because these are like typical virtual machines and you will see we have three attached to the private subnet and three attached to the private subnet the three for the private subnets are mainly used for the interconnectivity traffic between the cluster itself and the public uh, interfaces will have a private IP and also a public IP. So when you go to one of these, this is a network interface and I will go to the IP configurations. I will see here there is a private IP and there is also a public IP and this public IP will be used for the communication between the control plane and the uh, the data plane or your cluster now this is important because if you are doing um, uh, routing user defined routing for any any traffic going outside your vnet to go through a firewall the traffic will come through this public ip and then when it goes back out it will go back out through the firewall that means asymmetric routing and this this will will make the cluster fail so if you are doing routing which we will see in the coming demo uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are doing exception for uh, that the traffic coming uh, from or to the the control plane in this demo i'm going to show how to use arm templates to deploy an azure uh, databricks uh, workspace uh, with vnet integration and we will see that uh, uh, this network already or this subnet already has uh, network adapters attached to it and we'll see the changes that will happen uh, by deploying this first let's examine our template the template does not have anything other than one resource which is the workspace itself 
when I go to this resource, I can see here the type of the resource is a workspace. And I see in the parameters, I'm passing the virtual network ID, the subnet name, and uh, for the public subnet and the private subnet for, for both. Um, that's it. Like I'm not deploying any NSG, I'm not deploying anything else. The uh, delegation is not happening as well here. So I have to prepare my network before I start the deployment. I'm going to go here and show you the parameter file. In the parameters, the, network, the workspace will be called workspace with VNet2. The managed resource group is DBrix with VNet2. And these are the two names for uh, the subnets. Now let's see our uh, VNet. So this is the VNet and we are deploying to two subnets. Uh, the front end or the public will be called DBrix2 front and the private will be called dbricks to back. Uh, as a preparation, I already um, clicked on the properties of these subnets and I created the delegation to the Azure Databricks workspace. This is mandatory, I have to do this before. Um, here, the same thing on the other one. And for the NSG, this is um, as well needed because my template does not have NSG. So if my template uh, does not have NSG and I try to run it without having uh, NSG already attached to my subnet, my template create my template uh, deployment will fail. So I prepare this and for the NSG here, let me show you this one. It's uh, empty. I didn't add anything. Here you go. These are the default, as you can see the priority 65,000 and up. These are the default uh, rules. I didn't add anything extra other than these. Um, I wanna show you as well in the overview of this uh, virtual network. I have already a machine that has a network card attached to the bricks to uh, backend. That means this uh, uh, subnet has already machines attached to it. Uh, however, this will not prevent my deployment from succeeding. Get back to my ARM template. I'm going to go here and I prepared already the deployment PowerShell and I'm executing right now. Let's go back to my portal and I will see in the deployment. You should see a new deployment. Sorry, there is one parameter missing, which is the custom virtual network ID. I will get this one from here. This is my resource ID. Here you go. The deployment started. Get back to my resource group. I should be able to see my deployment running right now. And the deployment succeeded. See here, this is my workspace created. And let's go back to my virtual network. see in the subnet these are the two subnets everything as is no changes here the uh, the an overview I don't see anything new as I told you there is no uh, nothing deployed inside my VNet until I create my first cluster as we saw in the previous demo and the one that I'm gonna see here I want to show you is the changes that happened in the security group so I'm gonna take this one for example And here you go. These are the changes. The priority 100, 101, and 102. These are, are all created by the Databricks deployment. Now, this is the end of uh, this demo. And the next demo will be using Azure Firewall and how can we do uh, user-defined routing with 
the subnist that has the Databricks deployment. All right, so this is the last demo, and in this demo, we'll show how to use uh, Databricks with the VNet, also with using Azure Firewall. So I deployed this uh, Databricks workspace, and I'm using the virtual network uh, uh, playground VNet, and I have the private subnet name is Dbricks uh, BK. Let's go to the subnets. I have the the private one is the Dbricks BK, and the uh, public one is Dbricks Front. In both of them, uh, let's go to the uh, uh, private one first. I have a routing table. The first routing table is called private RT. And in a private RT, this is the the, the private routing table or the routing table that they called it private. The routing table, I'm routing everything that goes outside my VNet to my next hub, which is this IP. This IP is the IP for my firewall. So I deployed here Azure Firewall and this private IP for my firewall. So every time my cluster is initiating any traffic outside the VNet, it has to go through this firewall first and the firewall will allow or deny the traffic. Okay. Uh, the second one is the public, which is this one. In the public one, as we saw from the previous demo, we have the uh, the network cards that has the public IPs. That means we have traffic coming from the control plane, and if we routed everything going out to the firewall, that means the traffic will come from one way, which is the public IPs, and then will go out from another way, which is the, the firewall. And the firewall, because it's the Azure firewall is a sta stateful firewall, in this case, it will drop them. So we cannot use the same routing table. I created another routing table, and in the second routing table here, let me show you. I'm routing the same route, which is everything going outside will have to go to the private IP for the firewall. However, before it, I created two, two other uh, rules, uh, routing rules, and one is for the control plane and one for the web app. Where do they get these IPs? That's already documented in the Azure Databricks uh, documentation. You'll see the article user defined routing settings uh, and I have this in my in my uh, article as well, a link to it. Uh, and in this one, uh, we have the control plane, native IP, and the web app. And in these two, we have IPs defined for each region that we have Databricks available in. In my case, I'm using Canada Central. So these are the IPs that I'm using. And that's what I'm using here in the routing table. So anything coming to uh, or going from my 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 cluster or my uh, my virtual network or my subnet specifically to these IPs, it will go to the internet, meaning it will not be routed to the firewall, but it will go directly to the destination, which is these two destinations. This is very important. Otherwise, your cluster will fail if you created it. OK, so that's the first part. Uh, everything from this public uh, subnet will be routed to the, the firewall, except these two IPs. Now, the second part, let's go to the firewall itself. This is my firewall, and these are my rules. Netting, I'm not going to use netting because Databricks clusters does not work with the firewall uh, netting. This is destination netting in the Azure firewall, so I'm not going to use this one. However, I will use network rules and I will use application rules. Basically, I, I follow the documentation, the user defined rules here. So when we have, for example, the Metastore IP, this is the Metastore that has the metadata for our um, here, for example, the Metastore for Canada Central. It's stored in this one. It's a MySQL database, and this is the link for, for this one. In this case, I need to have uh, these rules allowed. These rules allowed here in my firewall, actually I'm using application rules. If I click on the my rules here, I will have the Metastore 
and I'm allowing the traffic for my SQL. The rest are well documented. So the artifact blob storage uh, primary, artifact blob storage secondary, log blob storage event hub endpoint, and all these are uh, well documented. However, in my testing, I found that I have some <clears throat> uh, some URLs or domains that are requested by Azure by Azure Databricks that is not fully documented in the documentation. And that's what I mentioned in my my uh, article as well. Uh, let me show you and uh, my Azure Firewall monitoring. So I sent all the, the diagnostic logs for Azure Firewall into my uh, log analytics workspace. This is my log analytics. And I see for the last four hours, for example, I had some issues when I was testing one of the quick starts. And I found that th this quick starts, for example, that the part of the quick starts in, in Databricks, it uses uh, data samples, sample data in, in a folder or a mount point called Datapricks data datasets. When you query data from this one, you are actually getting the data copied from um, Amazon AWS S3 bucket into your cluster. So I needed to allow traffic going to STS, STS uh, Amazon AWS and these two specific pockets I needed to allow them, otherwise I had denied. Now I don't have denied anymore for the last, let me check, the last four hours. My denied traffic is going down as you can see because I, I allowed these. If I go back to the last 48 hours in all my testing, I had some issues before with API to Snapcraft. I had some issues with uh, Cloudflare all these are added so my complete uh, list here um, i have the the snap packages snapcraft.io i have a request going to terracotta i have requests going to cloudflare <clears throat> um, ubuntu updates as well when we are creating the cluster i found that the cluster is requesting uh, packages from from the ubuntu update so i made sure that i'm adding the Ubuntu update because the, the base image for Databricks clusters are Ubuntu based. The samples, I added the two uh, fully qualified names for these. And I'm adding all these in my documentation. I will make sure to update my uh, GitHub repo with an ARM template that includes these as well. So with this, I could manage now to have my quick start completed and I could get the data and load the data into my data frames and so on regarding the network rules uh, i only added two things one i found it uh, again it wasn't documented in the documentation regarding the the network time protocol i found lots of traffic was denied on the port one to three so i added this port uh, using the udp protocol this is use basically for the cluster to adjust its own timing for the operating systems and i also added uh, service tags for different azure services for example in the future if you are using event hub if you are using event hub as a source for your datapricks uh, cluster and you're reading data from it then you need to add uh, the traffic allowed for the event hub i added sql and also here some specific, like region specific services. The event hub inside Canada Central, the event hub inside Canada East, you can be specific for the uh, service tags regarding the Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall understand the service tags. If you are using a different firewall, then you have to define the, the, the public IPs for, uh, for different Azure services uh, yourself. Here I'm using the same thing for SQL. So any SQL instance inside the Canada Central region or Canada East region, I'm allowing the traffic to go to them. Since the traffic will be mainly originated from the cluster to the, the cluster, the sorry, the SQL, then in this case, I just need to be in the network rules and there is no need for inbound traffic coming from the SQL server to Databricks. If you have a case where you are using the, the, the originator of your traffic is SQL Server, and you are somehow pulling data from your Databricks, then in this case, the traffic has to go through the public IPs and the return of traffic 
shouldn't go to the firewall. So in this case, you need to add the, the public IPs for the Azure uh, SQL like uh, service for the in the exception for your uh, routing table. With that, uh, I'm concluding with my video here. I will I will follow up with the, with this uh, for for this with the article I'm gonna write and I will add the article uh, link in the video description to list everything and I will make sure to add all the routing uh, exceptions and the the tests that I found also with the uh, services and the firewall rules into these. Thank you.